everyone, my name is Chantelle and welcome to another video. Today I've got something very exciting for you. It's a collaboration that is a little unusual. I'm collaborating with Pixie Sticks. She is a wonderful artist and she makes the most awesome character designs as that is what she loves doing best. For this collaboration she drew this artwork and I'm going to create a miniature based on this artwork. It won't be a one-on-one -on -one copy and it won't be perfect and it won't be perfect to scale, but most of the elements will be there and I just wanted to have fun creating. So let's get started. For this project I need cardboard and lots of it. From thin cardstock I cut out shapes I was going to need to build the base of the treehouse and the two landings. These were basically my blueprint of the miniature. I then cut out four circles, two for the bottom and two for the top, the two landings and two outsides. I say two because I'm going to attach a hinge to this miniature so it can open and close. To make the treehouse cylinder shaped I rolled up the cardboard. You can see the corrugation inside to the cardboard going vertical so you see the zigzag pattern at the top and the bottom. When you do this, this makes it easier to roll up the cardboard. After gluing two of the base and two of the top circles together, I fit them inside one of the half walls. It turns out that the walls are a bit shorter, so I decide to cut off a part of the circle. In the end you will see that the miniature is slightly oval shaped, but I don't think it matters much. If you want to know the full story behind the drawing that Pixie Sticks made, please check out her video. After gluing on both bases, this is what the miniature looks like so far. For this miniature creation, it's the first time I'm really experimenting with materials and how to cover cardboard. I used a mix of Gorilla wood glue and wool filler to close the gaps that are in the sides of the cardboard, which I applied with a popsicle stick. This actually works really well and leaves you with a very strong but organic looking finish. Then I'm measuring out where the first landing is going to be. I do this so I can put the scrapbook paper in. I'm also cutting out two windows and a door as that's the easiest to do at this stage. And this is where I place the two landings inside. To cover the walls on the inside I've used scrapbook paper that I stained with tea. To do this you have to brew some very strong tea. I've used one cup of hot water with three bags of black tea. I laid out the strips of paper on the baking tray and brushed them with the tea until completely covered. You can bake the paper for about 5 to 10 minutes at about 150 degrees Celsius. Make sure you keep an eye on your oven if you do this. And once the strips of paper are completely dry, take them out of the oven. I then glue on the strips with PVA glue. And this is what it looks like with all the wallpaper on. The floors are next. I used popsicle sticks which I cut in various lengths and attached them to both bases with PVA glue. Now that the floor is drying I'm moving on to the exterior of this miniature. With a popsicle stick I'm applying ready mix multi-purpose filler. Once that is on I'm going over the surface with a fork which gives the perfect resemblance of a tree bark. I am really pleased with how this looks. It really is a quick and easy solution adding texture to miniature walls. I do the same to the top halves of the tree. I trade in the popsicle stick for a palette knife, which works way better. And then again going over the surface with the fork to create that texture. Moving on to some of the interior pieces now. The bed sheets are up first. There is an orange pattern on the mattress sheet. I don't have that pattern in fabric, but I can make some with orange ink and the stencil. I pat a sponge onto the stamping pad and then gently apply it to some cheesecloth fabric which got the effect I wanted to achieve. For the blanket I took another piece of cheesecloth and put a piece of felt inside to give it more volume. 
From my box of embroidery threads I picked out the right orange colour and stitched around the edges and created some stitches on the blanket to give it that patchwork look. I draw on the black lines with a black permanent marker so it looks more like what Pixie Sticks drew in her drawing. I cut out the headboard for the bed from a piece of cardboard and kept it really simple. The bed rail I made out of parts of cocktail forks. I cut them to size and glued them into place. I'm creating the wall that's underneath the first landing and painting that the same color as what's in the original artwork by Pixie Sticks. After that, moving on to placing the wooden rods in the windows. Adding a finishing touch around the floors. And painting the floors with a watered down brown acrylic paint. The outside of the miniature was a bit more time consuming, just getting the paint onto that texture but I absolutely love how realistic it looks in the end. After putting in the top parts of the miniature, I apply more of the wool filler to fill the gaps at the top to make it all one piece. I cut out a door frame to finish off the archway underneath the first landing and put in the railing on the first landing. Now that can dry and I can move on to the part of the bed why I apply more of the mixture of Gorilla wood glue and wool filler to make it stronger and blend everything together. Once that's dry, I'm painting it with brown acrylic paint. This is where I create the mattress to go onto the bed. I used felt to give it more volume and attach the fabric that I've put the pattern on earlier to the felt. From the same fabric I'm creating a little cat pillow that's sitting next to her bed. It's not in the original design but I'm using some creative liberties here. The cat is a little too big for the diorama but I went with it. It was grey but I just painted over it with acrylic paints and now it matches what is in the drawing. I also made a rope ladder to go up to her bed, but I lost the footage of me making it, so here it is, finished. In the drawing there is a rug on the first landing. I don't have a honeycomb stencil, so I used something that came kind of close to it and frayed the edges. At this point I decide to put the hinge on the miniature. It's a hinge I bought at my local hardware store and it fits this miniature quite well. Moving on to the furniture of this miniature. For some reason I love making fireplaces. You've probably seen the one I did for my Edgar Allan Poe room and this is not any different. It's entirely made from cardboard and egg carton. And this is a little vent that I will place on the outside of the miniature. Then I move on to building the bookcase and the stairs. The stairs are way out of proportion, but as you will see, I went with it and it doesn't look too bad. This diorama has been a massive learning curve for me. After I assembled these three pieces, I covered them in multi-purpose filler. When I am a bit under pressure, I like to work in a way that's most effective for me. So first building the miniature pieces out of cardboard and then covering them all in one go with the filler. This is me assembling the stairs. It's basically chunks of cardboard stuck on top of each other. And then once covered with the filler and attached to the miniature, I cover it with brown acrylic paint. 
So moving on to the fireplace, I first cover the whole thing with the filler. I place a faux mirror on the top part of the fireplace. It was a pendant with a loop for a cord, but I just broke the loop off and we have a mirror. After the glue is dry, I apply a coat of light grey acrylic paint and then dry brush on a darker shade of grey. Then for the middle part I apply a coat of brown acrylic paint. And here I am placing the fireplace inside the house. Then onto the little elements that go into the house. I'm creating most things from scratch. The candles are made from wooden dowels. The flower pots and cauldrons are made from hollowed out foam balls. The books are pieces of chipboard glued together and colored in with sharpies. The chair was fun to make. This little chair definitely had an ugly stage and I didn't think it would turn out well, but I'm actually pretty happy with how it looks in the end. I'm using cardboard for the base and the back and felt to fluff up the cushions. For the fabric I used cheesecloth, which I then color blue with some ink. Here I am creating the armrests. For the front legs of the chair I roll up some cardboard to give it a fancy curl and strengthen it by attaching a small piece of dowel at the back of it. Then I painted the entire chair brown and attached the cushions to it. In the drawing you can see there is a blanket draped over the chair and the closest I got to some red fabric that wasn't lush velvet was this checkered red fabric and I think it fits really well with the theme of the drawing. Of course I also had to make the tiny witch head that is hanging on the wall. So here is me creating that out of some corduroy fabric that I've also used for the round rug that's on the floor. I did not put the footage of me making that rug into this video because it's basically two pieces of fabric stuck together. Finally I dry brush the outside of the tree with some light brown acrylic paint and attach flowers and leaves to make it look more magical. So let's have a look how it all looks all put together. And this is it for the treehouse inspired by the art created by Pixie Sticks. I absolutely enjoyed working on this project, but next time I will give myself more time to get things right. If you liked it, please give this video a thumbs up, it really helps my channel out. Make sure to check out my socials, support me on Patreon and hit that subscribe button if you're new to my channel. And don't forget to check out Pixie Sticks her channel and show her some love. The details are in the description box below, including the link to the video where she created the artwork that inspired this miniature. Next week I have another collaboration planned and the month of July is going to be Harry Potter month on my channel, so stay tuned for that. Thanks so much for watching, stay safe and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!